If you follow this channel, you know I put a video out maybe about a week ago and I talked about some of the things that I was concerned about with the XH2S. A little bit of a mini rant. Now this morning, they did announce all of the particulars for the XH2S and unfortunately, a lot of the things that I discussed in that video have not been addressed. The one way we know for sure for one of them is that Fujifilm is trying to deliberately deceive us, which is not a good look, at least not here in 2022. So anyways, the two features that I said Fujifilm needs to address with this X-H2S was the autofocus specifically in video mode. I'm not talking stills because the autofocus and stills mode, even on the X-T4 is very, very good. But in video mode, it is still way behind the competition. And then the other was the auto exposure, uh, get rid of the stepping whenever changing, whenever you are changing the aperture. So those two things, which are really are basics, like other brands are doing it and doing it very well. Fujifilm still has not figured it out. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to bury it and pretend like those concerns are non-existent and instead just focus on specification, specification, specifications. I think it's a terrible strategy. I think this, this camera is going to be a big bust because people are a lot smarter than that. In at that price point, there is so much competition for, you know, conceivably better cameras, right? Like a, an a7 four is $2,500. It's a full frame sensor with phenomenal autofocus. So it really depends on what your use case is. If you are a professional and you need 422 ProRes, like have at it. But for us mere mortals who are enthusiasts who occasionally use this for professional work, I'm not making movies. Like I really don't need a lot of this stuff. So my use case is literally, I just need the autofocus to work. So if I, I set the camera up over on the side and press record. I know that it's going to track my face as I walk around in the frame. Uh, also as the sun, excuse me, as the cloud passes over overhead, that the exposure is going to be set correctly. And if it needs to change the aperture, it's not going to do this stepping motion, which is the way that it currently works. So let's look real quick at the launch. Now, when I was watching the launch live, they were showing the autofocus performance in video mode Something didn't feel right. I didn't know at the time because, again, I'm just kind of watching this for the first time. But it to me, it felt like it was stuttering a little bit. And I was like, oh, maybe it's just the connection or maybe they just use a really high shutter speed or something like that. So I was like, oh, you know, I, I, I really didn't put much stock in it. Now I've gone back and watched it again. So let's take a look at it together and see if you can see what I'm talking about. Let me just play it through here real quick. To this, the most significant feature of the fifth generation X system is the air processing based on deep learning technology. It's okay. Do you see anything that looks a little amiss? Do you see how jerky it looks? Do you see how the camera's kind of all over the place? When you look at this, it gives the impression that this is uh, an actual movie that was shot using the uh, XH2S. But when you look down here, there's a little asterisk that says simulation movie. So this is not a movie file at all. This is instead a series of images that have been pulled together to make a movie. It is incredibly misleading, incredibly misleading because that green box, that overlay, that, that that's something that's been added after the fact. This is not something that is, uh, you know, part of the, the movie sequence itself. So I think it's going to look very similar to that, but I think this is all like CGI'd, which is not a good look. So look at it again. It's incorporated in the F system. It detects subjects such as human. So see what I'm talking about? They're just still images, just still images Mas that are all stitched together. This is especially animals, but obvious. Cars. Same thing here. See how it does that little skip? So it's not an actual video. Motorcycles and airplanes. And the airplanes all over the place. Contribute Dog, to same thing. Speed. So what this tells me is it does a great job in tracking mode when you are shooting stills. 
what this does not demonstrate is how well it performs when you are shooting a video. When you are creating a video, does this autofocus perform the same way? I would venture a guess that it does not. Because if it did, this down here would not say simulation movie. It would actually show, it would say ProRes 422, straight out of camera. This is the movie that you're going to get. But they're not doing that. Because the autofocus does not work. That's It does not perform nearly as quickly in video mode that it does for stills. Okay, let's go on to the next piece here. So this is with um, Locke and Kai. I don't know where they are now. I, I don't know exactly where they are, but I love these two guys. They're, they're hilarious. They're, they're like real world people. Just they're awesome. I'll link to all, both of these videos down in the description below if you want to check out both of them in their entirety. But let's just take a look at this and you can see that Locke is really disappointed. And the other thing I want you to look at is the when we get to this opening scene, take a look at the lights in between both Locke and Kai. Uh, you sold your X-T4 because you don't like the exposure. Yeah. Changing in steps. Yeah, I don't mind that. Okay, so you see the lights, they're going, you know, it's hunting like crazy. It doesn't know whether to focus on um, Locke, whether to focus on Kai, whether to focus on the stuff in the background. It has no idea what it's doing. It's doing precisely what all of the Fujifilm cameras up to this point have done, which is in video mode, it hunts like crazy. It has no idea what to do. It gets so easily confused. And I said this in the last video, and I'll say it again. Fujifilm needed to blow up this autofocus system. Literally, TNT, boom, blow it up, start from scratch, and they didn't do it. They just said, ah, oh, we'll just write a new algorithm. It'll be more sophisticated. Didn't work. Unfortunately, it just didn't work. Oh, okay. But then they said now it got um, step, let's, I mean, smooth aperture control. Let's see. Oh, very bright. So that's the stepping. I love this look on his face. He's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> you guys have had like four or five years to work on this camera and you still haven't figured out aperture stepping. Wow. Do I have to turn on something because it's still, it's still in steps. <laughs> oh, no. They're laughing about it. Information. Is that, Neither one of them can believe lens it. It's the lens. It's the lens that um, got stepless aperture control. So it sounds a little bit like long time ago when Lickon, when you shoot video with Lickon, you have to stop the video recording before you change aperture. Something like that. Right, so now he's putting on that 18 really to 120 lens. Connection between, uh, these which is supposed two. to have a stepless aperture. So let's try this stepless. Yeah, finally. Finally, yeah, it's stepless. And Fujifilm released that. I love that look at the end. He's like, yeah, it's stepless, kind of. You can still see it stepping, but it's much improved compared to the other lens that was on there. And I don't know what other lens was on there. Actually, I'm looking at it right now. It looks like the 16 to 55. Deeply disappointed. They didn't address some of the, the major issues with Fujifilm, specifically in video mode. I've totaled up all of my Fujifilm gear just to see what I've got invested in this system. It's in the neighborhood. It's, it's actually well north of six grand between lenses uh, and different camera bodies. I think I'm going to start selling some of it and making room for some other brand. I haven't decided which one I'm going to go with yet. I'm leaning more towards Sony. I had a Sony eight years ago, nine years ago that uh, it was a A57 that I eventually sold, started investing heavily in Fujifilm at that point in time. And in Fujifilm. Now, my use case has changed dramatically over the years. So even just as recently as say three, four years ago, I was maybe 80% stills and 20% video. Now it is flipped where I am 80% video and 20% stills. So having a camera that has excellent autofocus is more important to me than uh, image quality. I personally need something with much better AF uh, autofocus performance. Um, and I'm sure there's many other people uh, that do as well, because I, I see it in the comments that people leave. They're they're also frustrated with the the lack of the 
uh, autofocus performance that Fuji is providing. I'll stop there. Again, X-H2, fantastic camera, just not the right camera for me. If you don't need reliable autofocus and you are shooting with a fixed aperture in video mode, have at it. It is the cat's meow, as they say. If you did enjoy this video, just make sure that you smash that like button and also click the subscribe button down below to be notified of future videos. Thanks for watching. Take care.